नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर आशीष वशिष्ठ ई एन टी सर्जन मणिपाल हॉस्पिटल द्वारका न्यू डेली टूडे वी शैल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ वेरी यूनिक कंडीशन द इंसिडेंस ऑफ विच रिसेंटली हैज बीन ऑन द राइज एंड दैट कंडीशन इज कॉल्ड सी एस एफ राइनोरिया सी एस एफ बेसिकली स्टैंड फॉर सेरेब्रो स्पाइनल फ्लूड एंड दैट इज द फ्लूड ऑफ द ब्रेन इन विच आर ब्रेन टिश्यू इज एम्बेडेड और सो टू से फ्लोटिंग इट गिवस अ लॉट ऑफ शॉक एब्जॉर्बिंग प्रॉपर्टीज टू आर ब्रेन एंड it is covered by a layer called dura that separates the brain tissue from the bones of the ear and the nose now sometimes what happens is this cerebrospinal fluid in short called csf in hindi it's also called dimag ka pani this starts to leak from the uh, base of the skull towards commonly the nose and sometimes the ear hence what happens is when patients uh, bend down or they are sitting they often have a one sided leak from the nose it is like a tap of water has opened it is plain water dripping from the nose and uh, that water is basically csf it is often either traumatic or spontaneous in nature uh, spontaneous means when there is no reason it can happen suddenly in patients and in the spontaneous variety the most common uh, form is what happens normally in women aged 30 to 50 now what what has suddenly led to increase in this condition is a rising incidence of obesity obesity is a factor that leads to increased uh, intracranial pressure the pressure inside the brain increases thus causing slow and steady erosion of the thin bones of the skull base that separate the brain above and the nose below and when then there is a threshold point sometimes that can be precipitated by trauma even minor trauma that fluid starts to leak from the brain into the nose and thus causing the csf leak common symptoms like i said is watery discharge from the nose that aggravates on bending downwards or sitting and now the main question is why is this condition even important and why does it deserve treatment whether it is medical or surgical now the fact is that our brain or csf is a closed compartment and that is supposed and that is how god has made it so that no infection ever enters the brain because as we understand the infection of brain like meningitis or encephalitis carry a significant morbidity and sometimes even mortality now when the brain tissue starts to come out of the nose or the csf starts to come out of the nose in the leak that can lead to a contamination because our nose is not a clean area or a sterile area the nose has a wide amount of bacteria inside and viruses which if they go upwards following the csf leak they can cause infections of the brain commonly meningitis and the longer the csf leak continues in these patients the higher is the eventual risk of meningitis which carries sometimes a higher than 20% mortality and long term sequela including hearing loss or disabilities hence whenever you are confronted with a situation whether it is you somebody in your family or in your close circles when you feel that there is a history that there is sudden leaking of uh, watery fluid from the nose that happens either after trauma head injury or spontaneously one must take it seriously and at the uh, earliest visit the nearest hospital in the department of ENT and so that this can be investigated as to what is the site of leak and what is the size of leak because these are two very important features that dictate our treatment treatment is always surgical uh, the goal of surgery is to repair that defect through which the csf is dripping inside the nose Uh, we can repair it through multiple techniques we can use some fat from the body some fascia from the body or sometimes local tissues from the nose uh, can be used to repair these kind of defects and the defect repair depends on the site because the base of skull is a big site uh, where the defect is how big the defect is and what kind of patient we are dealing with uh, dictates the kind of surgical approach uh, we shall be required to take in obese patients when we feel that there is a high intracranial pressure the treatment becomes more tricky and we require more than one tool to settle this situation off untreated this has a high chance of morbidity as well as mortality also some patients have had this condition they have had they have been operated and unfortunately they have developed a recurrent leak sometimes that recurrent leak could be from the same site that was repaired erstwhile or it could be a new leak because the pressure of the brain is still high now if that be so 
This requires a multimodality treatment with discussion with our colleagues from neurosurgery department where we see through multiple scans and tests that what is the reason of this high intracranial pressure and first of all before attempting a new treatment or surgery we must correct the cause of the raised intracranial pressure through medical or surgical means and when that is done then only we must proceed to a further surgical treatment to correct this condition forever and for good. So next time in your circles if somebody has this condition where somebody has leaking fluid inside the nose or somebody feels that on lying down there is water that is going down back towards the throat and that causes discomfort this must be taken seriously and not casually and must be examined at the earliest. That does not mean that anybody who is allergy or has some sneezing or watering from the nose has to be alarmed. It is not supposed to create panic but in the absence of sneezing, any nasal congestion, history of allergy, sudden spontaneous profuse leak of watery fluid from a single nostril is ominous whether it is the children or elderly and must be uh, treated at the earliest. Thank you.